Savior. And I know there will be God's many over 27 years ago. Thank God for his love that drew salvation's plan and the grace that brought it down to man. Thank God for his beloved son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who came down this sin-cursed world. He didn't have to come, but he came down the sin-cursed world because he loved us. He came on a rescue mission. He got into a covenant with his heavenly father because he loved the soul. He come forth seeking that lost sheep and we're all we're lost we're all like sheep gone astray but the lord left the 99 and went into the wilderness to find the one that was lost and even if there was only one lost or only if there was going to be one person that could be saved among all the billions and billions and billions of people that would ever come to the earth and be born into this world the lord jesus christ would have still came into this world just seeking to save that one and thank god he's out and about and he's seeking to save that which is lost and he came into the world to save sinners and thank god for the lord jesus christ thank god he's the only savior and i know there will be god's many but there's only one true and the living god and like the scripture says there's only one name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved and that name is jesus christ and jesus is a must and you must know him in reality dear friend as your savior you just can't know about him in the figment of your imagination and you just can't have a church membership and a water baptism and go through some sort of formality of religion some people they get uh, they they baptize their babies when they're born into this world thinking that's going to save that little baby and it's going to uh, that's going to be enough for that particular uh, child when it grows up and for the rest of its life there's so many different uh, religious ideas and erroneous doctrines and teachings of man and uh, doctrines of devils 
And the devil don't mind what kind of false doctrine that you latch hold to as long as you latch hold to something that's not real and he wants to take you down to hell. But he's got this world bound up in religion, bound up in all these different types of uh, rituals and just all these different types of uh, religions and uh, bowing down to idols and bowing down to things made of man's hands and worshiping the stars and the and the different uh, planets and believing in some believe in reincarnation and and God have mercy upon all that. And some say they don't believe they're just an atheist, but uh, you get them uh, finally when that particular atheist gets on their dying bed, they begin to cry out to a higher being. But I tell you, there's only one creator and thank God that's the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus, he, you know, even his heavenly father created this world and brought this world into existence by the blast of his word. The Bible says that uh, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth in the book of Genesis. And Genesis means the origin of all things. And it all come from God. God created it. He's the author and the finisher of the Christian faith. And first of all, he's the creator of the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything that's therein. He created the heavens and the earth and in six days. In the seventh day, he rested from all his work. You see, thank God for the wonderful power of God who brought this world into existence. And I had no problem really believing that. I know that. And I especially know that since I've been saved because the Holy Spirit that moved upon the face of the waters when he created the, the, the world. The Bible says the world was without form and darkness was upon all the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And the Lord said, let there be light. And he began to divide the waters from the waters and cause a firmament to come in the mist there. And he called the, uh, the dry ground earth. And he separated the waters in which he, uh, the dry land appeared. And the seven continents appeared. And the seven seas appeared. And thank God the Lord created all this. The Spirit of God created all that. And I always believed that. But when I prayed and repented of my sins and called on the Lord, my broken heart and a contrite spirit, the same Spirit of God that created this world that moved upon the face of the waters, thank God, the same Spirit came into my soul and took up His abode and took up residence in my soul right then and there on the spot. And so therefore, I'm not hoping that there's a God I'm not hoping that I'm right. I'm not hoping that I'm saved. I know that I'm saved. I've got a heartfelt, no-so salvation, and the Lord's alive, and he speaks to me, but not with an audible voice. It's still by faith, but I know that he put his indwelling of his Holy Spirit in me, the Holy Comforter, and I have that still, small voice, that inner voice of the Lord speaking to my inner spirit, and he says, he talked about it's the still small voice of the Lord. And I know that if you get still long enough, the Lord will speak to your heart through the preaching of the word of God. And he knows where you live. He knows what it will take to open up your eyes to, to save you. And he'll bring you to the knowledge of the truth. But you just got to be humble. You got to be open and honest with the Lord. And he wants to deal with you. He's dealing with all of his creation. He's, he's not willed not one person to, to die in their sins and go to hell. He's willed everyone to Calvary. He's willed everyone to be saved. And it's only through Jesus Christ, like I said, to be God's many, but there's only one true and living God, and he's the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus came into this sin-cursed world to die the death of a sinner, to take our place on the cross, to shed his untainted blood, to wash our sins away, in order to, for the Holy Spirit to indwell in our vessel. Because the Holy Spirit is not going to dwell in an unclean vessel. That's why the blood has got to be applied to the soul. And then once he cleanses your soul from sin, then the Holy Spirit comes in right then and there on the spot and takes up residence. And all that transpires, and that transaction happens in the midst of your prayer, when you're praying and when you mean business with the Lord, when you give up the world, give up sin, and give up your ambitions, and give up uh, fame and fortune and silver and gold, Want the Lord early, first and foremost, above all the things in this world. And I tell you, if you 
pray like that and really pray and pray through and give it all up and want the Lord above life itself, he'll save you, dear friend, and he'll get alive in your heart and he'll give you that no-so heartfelt salvation. He'll put his spirit in you. He'll put his nature in you. He'll put the mind of Christ in you. He'll change your course and establish where you're going. He'll put your feet upon the solid rock and the rock is Christ and the gates of hell shall not prevail against those that's upon the rock. But Jesus is a must and he's the only savior of all the world. There's so much confusion, so much things to weed through, so to speak. Just like uh, John the Baptist, when he came on the scene, he had an ax in his hand and he says, behold, the ax is laid into the root. And he began to swing that spiritual ax and to cut down all the erroneous doctrine that had grown up and that had, you know, from man's imagination, he had to tear it down. And that's what we have to do. We are called of God to preach, to, just to tear down the, the religious walls that the devil has built and to tear down all these different types of things. Have a great uh, demolition, if you will.